Hello and welcome everyone to the second part of the devlog series about the irregular engine. I actually planned on doing this kind of videos more frequently, but progress was so fast that I never felt like this was the right moment. But now I'm done with one huge chunk of a project, which is Minecraft functionalities. Yes, the irregular engine now is capable of loading Minecraft worlds as of version 1.18.2. It yet does not work perfectly, for example the redstone wires are currently green. This is because the way it currently works is that all blocks that need to be tinted, like leaves and grass, all use the same tint color and in the original Minecraft resource pack redstone wires also count as tinted, but they have an exceptional tint color, which I currently did not implement in that way in the irregular engine. One reason for that is that I try to make the world reader as analytically as possible. This means it can automatically figure out which faces to cull, depending on how the sides of the blocks are made and which texture is going to be displayed. So it automatically realizes that, for example, the glass block here is transparent and thus it should not cull the face behind the glass block. But other faces, like opaque full block faces, are being called, so you can see it does not introduce any unnecessary geometry. At least almost in the case of stairs, it does not yet work perfectly. There are also a few other things that are yet not loaded properly. This is uh, water, for example, or chests, or generally any other kind of model that usually is hard-coded in Minecraft. So it currently only loads the analytically loadable resources. You can see that with the hashed alpha, also analytically rendering the glasses works quite well. Another thing I've been working on is performance. As you can see, now if I let it render, I have two to three times the frame rate compared to the last devlog, even though I this time have two light sources instead of one. This is because the shadowing calculations have drastically been improved. This is because, first of all, the construction of the irregular z-buffer now uses the space better. The second reason is that I now entirely moved all the per fragment processing to compute shaders, which simplifies the pipeline significantly. Also, the exclusive sum scan, which previously was done on the CPU, is now done in parallel on the GPU which decreases the necessity for back and forth loading of huge amounts of data per sample drastically. For those who are interested, I implemented a little debug window. Here you can see how the shadowing calculation works. If I move the camera, you can see that the red spots are the buckets and as brighter the pixel is, as more fragments there are within one bucket that the irregular rasterizer has to evaluate. So in the best case scenario, it actually tries to distribute the red as much as possible. So if I, for example, go up here a little, you can see that the little island here fits way better in the bucket structure of the light source. If you are now wondering why this is going so crazy, that is because this debug window actually shows the shadowing computation of the environment, which is the second new feature of the irregular engine. If I zoom in a little, for example, on uh, this part here, you can see that it very accurately produces the shadowing from the environmental light. This kind of quality usually can only be generated with ray tracing, but due to irregular rasterization producing ray tracing quality shadows, in this case it is also possible to get this kind of result. These slides I will use in the next part of the Irregular Engine Maths series, where I explain everything and all the mathematical concepts in detail. Um, now I'm just gonna give a quick overview. These tables are just showing the notation I use, as the notation differs greatly between maths and physics and data science notation. This is some kind of unified mixture of all of those. Uh, this is the rendering equation that we are actually trying to solve, and this is how the integrals can be split to sums, which then actually can be sampled with concrete values. And here you can see how I derive this term here. All the rest, as I said, is just part of the explanation. But it actually is only this relatively tiny bit of maths that is evaluated when rendering the environment light. 
Still, irregular rasterization isn't perfect, as work complexity increases linearly with the amount of pixels and the amount of triangles in the scene. So if I now increase the render distance a little to 4 in each direction, plus the middle chunk which are 9 by 9 chunks in this case, you will see that uh, performance will decrease drastically just by the very fact that we now have more geometry. So and if I now go into full screen mode you can see that frame rate dropped quite drastically. And this really is due to the shadowing computation. If I disable the shadows you can see that uh, frame rates are very high. So it is not the rendering itself but it's really the shadow calculations. But I think they really are worth the effort because if I actually zoom a little closer you can see how accurate the shadows actually work also with the alpha and the transparency and everything else. It just works as someone would expect and, and for me this engine is capable to replicate a look I've been trying to achieve with various different rendering engines. Minimator is just not capable of doing something like that and while Blender is capable of producing this kind of style it is very time consuming to set up and to render. This engine accelerates and optimizes this workflow for this particular rendering scenario. But this doesn't mean that it must always look the same. The Irregular Engine also has support for PBR Minecraft resource packs. These resource packs currently must be in one exact format, which is the LARP PBR format, which is a unified format for PBR rendering in Minecraft with shaders. Now here you can see that the model for redstone is very different in this resource pack and thus the redstone itself now also works. Here you can see that it also works very well with the normal maps and parallax occlusion maps or height maps to keep it a little more simple. So if I zoom in into the stones you can see that everything works as you would expect and generally in most cases it works just as expected. There are a few exceptions though. For example, animated textures are not yet implemented. Also, you should consider that high resolution texture packs drastically will slow down rendering, especially when it comes to transparent rendering. The high resolution texture lookups are just very expensive no matter how you put it. Well, however, this was it for the second devlog of the Irregular Engine devlog series. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try my best to answer everything as good as I can and if not leave a like or whatever <laughs> oh my god uh, and we'll see next time